Hey there guys and welcome, it's Niren here and today is career mode episode 5. I do believe, please tell me it's episode 5, I'm really hoping it is now. But today we've got two more games in our Aston Villa career mode. The first is up against Norwich in the Barclays Premier League and the second is the Capital One Cup third round tie against Yeovil Town. We'll be at home in that game uh, just just quickly, just to open up, this is a scout report I've been getting on some Spanish players. And here, two new strikers from uh, the UK as well. There's Zach Clough of Bolton, Jake Sinclair of Southampton, and then some older players. Well, not older players, but players who've been there for longer, if you know what I mean. Tyler Harvey of Plymouth, Elliot Lee of West Ham, Tuba Akpom there, Devante Cole. I think Jordan Ivey's a little bit further down as well. And some other young, promising strikers. Jake Sinclair there, very good. He's 18 years old and he plays for Southampton. He is, of course, a striker. Great pace, great agility, and he looks as if he might develop into someone uh, very talented. I might have a look at him, actually, in the next transfer window. That report was complete. So that's as much as info as we'll get on him. But now it is time. Let's just get straight into the game. We've got Norwich here first. I'm just sorting out the team. Uh, Zachariah Backley, I decided to change out for Brumer in the end. Backley really hasn't had as much of an impact as Broomer has since joining. I know Broomer is a better stat, but Backley hasn't really come in and shone. Uh, I think he may have got maybe an assist somewhere along the lines, but yeah, as you can see, I did decide to change out Broomer there. Uh, but a relatively unchanged squad. Guzan in goal, uh, Lotan Okore, Vla, and Klein, my defenders there. Uh, Van Yinkel, who came in for Ashley Westwood, and Zogbia, and Fabian Delph, my, attack, uh, my set midfielders even. And then Benteke, Vyman, and Bakali up front. Now, this was an extremely strange uh, game. This was the first chance of the match. And OP over the top ball to Snodgrass and Bannon. Barry Bannon, of course. The guy who I... Literally, I'm sorry. I would have put chances in. But this was literally the first chance of the game. In the 35th minute, this was an extremely annoying goal for me. Because it didn't make sense to me. That, that over the top ball was impossible. And how you get that much pace on the header is beyond me from Snodgrass. Guzan should have done much better and has been in terrible form so far this season. And my defender should have done better. But he came back instantly. Vyman played in there by Delft. Gets the shot away and it goes straight to Bruma. But his first goal as an Aston Villa player, I do believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, I should know these things. But a great celebration. And he got us back in the game. Equalised there with only the second chance of the game. Bruma there on the 39th minute. This was really... An odd game, full of action in terms of goals, but other than that, there wasn't a huge amount more going on, especially in the first half. But now after this, we move on to the second half here, and Anthony Pilkington bursting away. He cuts it back for Leroy Fur, and an incredible block there by Ron Blanc. The cool thing about that was actually a manual block. I had to actually press X to slide tackle. That wasn't him doing it on his own. There, Guzan, though, uh, getting getting a name for himself a bit more back in this game, if that made any sense there, with a double save sort of. Benteke there with a nice reverse ball there for Van Yinkel at the other end and a great save from uh, Norwich's keeper, which isn't John Ruddy, actually, I don't know who it is, but another OP over the top ball for Houlihan. Guzan came out and again another save from Houlihan's chip effort. Moments later, further giving the ball to Martin Olsen, he gets it back there, puts it in, and where's Houlihan there with the header? Now, at the time, this goal was obviously infuriating. This was... I was throwing tantrums all over the shop. Things were getting thrown across my lounge. But actually, when you look back, it is an incredible move. I have to say, the great movement between Fair Olsen and then uh, Wes Houlihan to get into the box. But, you know, it just it just frustrated me that my players don't seem to make those sort of runs as well. There, Van Yinkel late on in injury time with the shot. But then just at the end, Van Yinkel played in, plays it to Klein. He's tackled. Van Yinkel forces it to Benteke and he slots it past the Norwich keeper. The second game in a row. We get a 90th minute equaliser and the second time in a row it's Christian Benteke. Action all over the show here. And what a, what a, it was a good finish actually, putting it right in the bottom corner there. The, the huge, the humongous monster of a man. Uh, that is Christian Benteke and that was the last action of the match. In the end a very dramatic match which saw a lot of goals. But other than that, not a huge amount of chances in the first half. Second half got a lot better. Marco Van Yinkel was the man who got man of the match. I'm very happy with him as a signing, especially only on loan uh, from Chelsea. He's really proven to be a great signing. Uh, Bruma's done well as well, of course, getting the goal. Backley, I think, will take time to settle in. And, of course, the youngster Mason Bennett 
will have a tough time uh, getting into the squad as he's only, you know, 17 and that. Nathaniel Klein I've also been uh, impressed with. But then here is our first youth scout in the tour. I sent uh, my youth scout out to England he could, and he could only find one player, and that was Stuart Dwyer uh, there, who has OK uh, starting stuff. It doesn't look as if he'll be incredible, I have to say. It looks as if he'll be uh, late 50, so he'll probably be released anyway. But he might, you never know, he might develop into something. But here, the second match of the episode, it is against Yeovil Town. And of course, I wanted to put a little bit of a young squad out. Benjamin Segrist this time would be the man in goal. Brad Guzan, who was, I mean, he, yeah, he made a few saves in that uh, Norwich game. But really, he should have done a lot better with the, goal, with the first goal. Anyway, the second goal, there wasn't much he could do about that. But there, you could see the squad. Alexander Tonev also coming in for Vyman. Backley in for Bruma. And a youthful bench that includes Mason Bennett. I think the Cuba Silla was there as well. Uh, Gary Gardner also starting in place of Fabian Delph. Ashley Westwood there as well. No, sorry, not Fabian Delph, because Fabian Delph does that. Gary Gardner came in for, uh, for Van Yinkle, sorry, or someone. I have no idea. I don't care. You don't care. All you care about is the fact that Fabian Delph has just scored an absolutely incredible volley. Backerly there with an assist. That could be his first for the club. And an incredible volley on his on the outside of the boot. That's actually his weaker foot as well. Into the far corner. There was no chance for the Yeovil Town keeper. Uh, who I think is called Marek Steck. I think he used to play for West Ham. That was it. That was it for the first half. No word of a lie now. Also, that didn't look like much of a highlight, did it? But in the grand scheme of things, that was a huge moment in the game. Because that was the moment in the game I realised Alexander Tonev was useless. Um, not useless in general, but he was having a useless game. So I brought on Jack Grealish, and just three minutes later, Nzogbia plays in Jack Grealish down the right-hand side, and he blasts it past Marek Steck to make it 2-0 in the 65th minute. So there you go. If Alexander Tonev had controlled that and maybe forced the save out of the goalkeeper, that might not have happened. And in the 65th minute, uh, the win was confirmed. Uh, after that, I decided to take off Ben Teke. There was no point really risking him. And I brought on Mason Bennett and a few other youngsters uh, to boot, but that made it 2-0. Uh, Gardner there played in uh, by Backley, another good ball, but his shot, his finesse shot was right at the keeper, and uh, that was it. What a boring game. Just, I, I didn't actually realise it was such a boring game. Looking back at it, that was diabolical. Three highlights, two of which were goals, which is brilliant, but never, nevertheless, Nathan Baker there getting man of the match, so he can expect to be in the starting lineup, or at least on the bench for games to come. Ron Vlaar, Nathaniel Klein, Del. Bakali uh, and Zogbia Grealish also getting good ratings there as well. Benjamin Segrist on his Aston Villa debut getting a 6.7. So that was nice to see. Alan Hutton here was a bit disappointed he wasn't getting any game time. Not that that matters because I'm selling in the next transfer window, hopefully. He was actually up for sale in the uh, in the, in the um, summer transfer window that's just been. But no teams came in with any offers for him. So in the end, I decided uh, that he would just mainly play in the reserves. I apologise for that, Alan Hutton. But I'll leave you now with... The table, Manchester United top on 13 points, a point ahead of Spurs, and we've got Liverpool, Newcastle, and Manchester City occupying the rest of the European spots on 10. We find ourselves in 6, that's a great place for us to be. West Ham just behind there in 7, then Fulham, West Brom, Everton, Chelsea with a terrible start to the season, although they do have a game in hand. They're 11, we've got Southampton, Sunderland, Norwich, Crystal Palace, the best of the new promoted teams, then Arsenal down in 16th, what a shocking start to the season for them. Cardiff are 17th. Hull 18th, Stoke 19th, and as you can see, Swansea there bottom. Uh, I leave you with that there, the, the picture of the table. I'm hoping you've enjoyed this episode of Karimo. Like and subscribe if you did. Comment about enjoying it if you enjoyed it that much. I hope you enjoy yourselves. Have a good day. And most importantly, or maybe least importantly, who the heck cares? Goodbye. Alright, alright, that was one crash. And to be honest, it didn't even make sense anyway. I mean, he goes to right in front of me, but bar that, I mean, it's been...